believe I have made a significant find in the ruins of cinema, a volume of ancient Sumerian horror practices and splatter incantations. It is entitled Naturum de Manto, roughly translated Evil Dead Rise. The film is bound in human flesh and printed in human blood. It deals with sisters and demon resurrection, and those forces which roam the cities and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few scenes warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant, but are never truly dead. They may be recalled to active life through the incantations presented in this film. It is through the recitation of these passages that the demons are given license to possess a YouTube video. And I, Matt Draper, will now commence reading aloud the first of the spiritual resurrection passages. Wait, that's probably a bad idea. 2023's Evil Dead Rise, written and directed by Lee Cronin, is a fascinating blend of giving franchise fans more of the unique scares they expect from Raimi and Company's Deadite horror, while also evolving the story through a modern urban setting and new familial fears. With a decade passed since the last film in the series, and the Bruce Campbell starring Ash vs. Evil Dead cancelled, and bringing Ash's time in the series to an end, Rise has the responsibility of not just satisfying fans, but giving the series a way forward, with the series creators only involved in producing roles. So without our iconic hero, without the vision of Sam Raimi, and without its go-to cabin in the woods setting, what is Evil Dead now? Evil Dead Rise follows Beth, played by Lily Sullivan, who arrives at the home of her sister Ellie, played by Alyssa Sutherland, and her three children to process an unexpected pregnancy, only for a Book of the Dead to be unearthed in the basement and unleash the deadites within their condemned apartment building. With Ellie soon possessed and the family under siege from the terrors of the deadites, Beth must embrace her sudden maternal role to survive the night. But does Evil Dead Rise live up to the legacy of one of horror's strongest franchises? How does it evolve and expand a previously contained world of the Necronomicon? And what new fears are explored in this flesh-ripping tale of family, motherhood, and responsibility in the face of undying evil? Let's find out, and... Shortly after Fede Alvarez's Evil Dead relaunch hit theaters in 2013 and performed well against its budget, talk turned to what would come next, with Alvarez, Campbell, and Raimi discussing their intentions of making both an Evil Dead 2 and an Army of Darkness 4, and then bringing Ash and Mia together for another film after these. It's unclear exactly why plans changed, but Raimi's Army of Darkness 4 eventually became the Starz series Ash vs. Evil Dead, which ran for three seasons from 2015 through 2018 before its cancellation. I like the show, but I don't think a television approach or pacing is exactly right for Evil Dead. In any case, focus on making the show paused any further films until it came to an end. Eventually, a new Dead film was announced in 2019, and director Lee Cronin, who had just made his feature debut with the Irish horror movie The Hole in the Ground, was handpicked by Raimi in 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic would delay the film somewhat, as would the temporary plans to release it only on HBO Max. Thank God that didn't happen. But the pandemic also ended up shaping the story itself. I wrote this movie right at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, said Cronin. So I was locked in my apartment writing this script on my bed with an evil force outside my door, AKA COVID-19. Being trapped in that space gave me a lot of time to look around at things. I always wanted there to be a fight in a kitchen. As for its modern urban setting, Rise still sticks with the essence of previous films by placing the story in a rundown apartment set for demolition, barely populated and isolated due to a deadite earthquake. Almost the entire story takes place in our family's apartment unit, essentially translating the small location of the original into this new setting. Personally, I was a little surprised by Rise's physical limitations, as I thought we were guaranteed a big building-wide deadite rampage. It turns out my expectations were much more like Lamberto Bava's Demons 2 than what the producers had in mind, with Cronin saying, Producer Rob Tappert was just keen to remind me that Evil Dead movies are about one set of innocent people that are trapped, and to not expand so far that it starts to feel like a different type of movie. And I liked that piece of advice because I wanted it to be as claustrophobic as possible. In the 
end, I basically got rid of all the floors in between, and I used the top floor and I used the basement of that world. Demons 1 and 2 rock, by the way. A video on both Demons movies is coming for sure. So with a smaller setting, Rise is able to stay focused on its central family and their struggles, informed by decades of history together. It also helps that Rise had a budget of around $19 million, enough to create some really fantastic sets, makeup, and effects in a limited scope. Pushing the scale of the story further probably would have either led to a cheaper look to stretch the budget, or push the team to use more CGI to accommodate what they were trying to bring to life. And much like the 2013 film, Rise largely avoids CGI for most of its effects and sets. Not to turn this into some big CGI versus practical debate, but I appreciate the Evil Dead series' commitment to using practical effects. The blood elevator alone is a standout scene, thanks to the tactile nature of the blood as it rises around Beth and Cassie, with the team using about 6,500 liters of fake blood to make it happen. Evil Dead Rise is one in a very long line of amazing horror films about parenthood. There are films about how parents mess up their kids, told from the perspective of children, like Goodnight Mommy or Skinamarink. And then there are movies about parents that are in danger of losing their children, told from the perspective of parents who will do anything to save them. Think the central struggle of Poltergeist. Children aren't the source of horror, but the subject of it, placing an even greater fear on the parental figures fighting for their family against a creature, killer, or force that stands as a metaphor for the real-life tragedies that happen every day. Cronin's previous film and first feature, The Hole in the Ground, is about as exciting as, well, a hole in the ground, but it has a similar focus on parental fears and the ways a parent's worries about their child can burrow into their minds and warp everything around them. Rise is a story about single parenthood and motherhood, bottling up all those anxieties about whether your children are going to be okay and if you're a good enough parent. Out of any other horror movie beyond the Evil Dead films, Rise has the most in common with the original Child's Play. Like Ellie and Beth, Andy's mom Karen struggles to take care of her son and fend off the abusive Chucky. Rise also trades on the opposing fear of children worried about their parents and endangered by negligence, abuse, and anger. I think it's a terrifying experience for a child to see their parents suffering from sickness, addiction, mental health issues, and anything else that suddenly turns their caretaker into an abuser. Prior to her dead-eyed possession, Ellie seems like a pretty good mom. Maybe extra lenient and a little messy, but someone willing to let her children be who they want to be, even after their father has left. Dead-Eyed Ellie is obsessed with claiming the children as her own forever, and the Marauder is the ultimate enmeshed family. The personification of an unhealthy, codependent parent-child relationship, as mother and kids form together as an inextricable familial unit. Beth, coming to terms with being a mother, goes from not being able to openly talk about her pregnancy to both keeping the baby and becoming a surrogate mom to Cassie. Are you gonna be a mom? Yes. And I'm getting us out of here. Rise's approach to horror is somewhere between Raimi's Spooka Blast of Evil Dead 2, the greatest film of all time, ranking just above Predator, Kiki's Delivery Service, Chunking Express, Before Sunset, and Shin Gojira, and the more visceral terror of Fede Alvarez's 2013 relaunch. Specifically, I find that the film doesn't just mix the two approaches, it transitions from one to the other. Starting at a much darker and grimmer place in its first half, as the toll of the Deadeye curse is seen on Ellie's body, as it falls apart in front of her children. But as the film goes on, fountains of bile and blood fill the screen, and have no real connection to the actual capacity of the human body. An Evil Dead 2 homaging eyeball spit is so over the top as to keep it from being totally disturbing. <coughs> With this, Rise moves away from the straight gore of the 2013 reboot and more into the splatter of Evil Dead 2 and Ash vs. Evil Dead. And yes, there's a difference between gore and splatter. Gore is meant to evoke a painful, realistic response that reflects the vulnerable nature of our bodies, like the arm cutting scene from the reboot. We all know it's not real, but I can't really show it because, oh god, blur the picture, blur the picture. Splatter is shocking, but fun pushing past realism and into cartoonishness that shocks because of how much more extravagant it is than we would ever expect. Think the blood geyser from Evil Dead 2. We gasp and then we laugh because we can't actually relate to something so extreme. The same goes for how Rise's Deadites are brought to life. Raimi's Deadite possession is an instant and extreme transformation, more like a ghoul or a hag with exaggerated, creepy features. 
Alvarez's deadites self-mutilate to become grotesque. Cronin's deadites are somewhere in between, self-mutilating at times but also immediately transfigured by possession. Bridget's inky, dripping infection is an homage to Ash's hand, which was originally done by drawing on Campbell with pen and stop-motioning the spread. Act 3 is easily the film's most gruesome, filled with blood, chunks, and the multi-headed marauder. But by this point, Cronin has pushed his viscera so far that we're fully in splatter territory. And the splatter extravaganza also requires big damn hero shit, elevating Beth from a shocked and struggling victim to a badass champ that begins to echo Ash, complete with shotgun and chainsaw. And of course, I knew exactly what she'd say here before it happened. What else could it be? Come get some. While Evil Dead Rise isn't as brilliantly original as all three of Raimi's movies, and isn't as unforgettably shocking as Alvarez's take, it's exactly in the vein of what made me love this franchise in the first place. Gruesome scares, inventive movie making, and larger than life characters on the sides of both good and evil. If there is one major critique I have of the film, it's that its cabin prologue and looping epilogue are completely unnecessary. Yes, we get that incredibly sick title reveal, but the inclusion throws the film's pacing completely out of whack, ramping up to 10 in just a few minutes before settling way back down for a more traditional Act 1 rising tension, and then giving our characters a satisfying conclusion to their arcs and a heroic fade to black, before putting an obvious button on any questions we had from that prologue. I get that it's a little something to give fans the cabin in the woods horror they expected, and to underline the unstoppable nature of the Deadite Force, like the original, while still giving Beth and Cassie a happy ending. But I don't need it. Be confident on your take on the material. It's the only half measure in the film, but it's the first and last thing you see. It leaves an impression. By this point in the franchise, we don't need the old familiar. We had Army of Darkness for God's sake. We know how wild the series can get, which makes Tappert's earlier production notes on what Evil Dead is or isn't so strange. Then again, Tappert was the cause of most of the behind the scenes turmoil on the TV show. As far as how Rise fits into the larger narrative of the franchise, I like that it's all sort of ambiguous. The biggest element that the film adds to the series is establishing the idea that there are actually three books of the dead. The cartoonish, face-covered book from Ash's stories, the sewn-together monstrosity of the 2013 film, and this new veiny and toothy version. It's all playing off the gag in Army of Darkness, where Ash has to pick the right Necronomicon out of three copies. In Raimi's film, it's a silly little excuse for some Three Stooges-esque physical comedy, but I think it's a really smart decision by Cronin to use this as the genesis for his slowly expanding universe that lets the 2013 film coexist with the original movies without creating confusion. I kind of look at them almost like Gospels in the Bible, said Cronin. It's like the same story told a slightly different way by a different person. But what I really appreciate about Cronin's film is that while it's hinting at larger mythology, it's not beating you over the head with cinematic universe jargon. The same goes for all its little easter eggs that point toward other films. No lingering cameras, just enough screen time to pop hardcore fans. Henrietta's Pizza, how every character's name is from a previous actor in the series, the way that Beth holds the chainsaw just like Bruce in the original promo photos, small musical cues by composer Stephen McKeown that homage previous musical stings by Joseph Leduca. It's far from the movie poking you in the ribs and demanding you say, I know what that is! Even the movie's biggest easter egg is obscured, as Bruce Campbell cameos as one of the voices protesting the translation of the Book of the Dead. Unless you were told beforehand or just obsessed with Bruce to the point of rereading if Chins could kill over and over again, <coughs> that's me, <coughs> it probably wouldn't stick out to you. Destroy it! It's called the Book of the Dead for a reason! But the fact that Cronin later said that it may actually be a time-displaced Ash makes it even more exciting within the context of the franchise. Every Evil Dead film features iconic sound design. Think the droning roar of the evil force, the cackling of the Deadites. Ash's revving chainsaw. What Raimi and company made sure to do was to create an atmosphere of evil that surrounds the audience, putting them on edge and illustrating the Deadite presence before anything manifests visually. And thankfully, sound designer Peter Albertson's work in Rise is fantastic throughout, containing all those iconic sound cues from films before and adding new layers for its urban setting. But it's the record player scene that highlights its power the most, as Danny brings an old record to life that eventually sustains itself through the sheer power of evil. You can practically feel the power of the record through its thrumming bass and warping voices. 
voice, which is also applied to how the voice of each Deadite is manipulated. Visually, Rise features hallmarks of the franchise, such as the shaky cam Deadite Force shot. But cinematographer David Garbett and production designer Nick Bassett create a real warmth within the family's home the feels lived in, which is contrasted against the coldness of the hallway and basement. But eventually, that warmth is violated by the Deadites, and nowhere is safe. Putting kids in peril is always a bit taboo, even in horror movies, but Rise strikes a nice balance in being ruthless with the two teenagers and keeping our youngest in peril but ultimately safe, at least physically. Kids gonna need a lot of therapy. The film features really strong performances all around, but it hinges on the strength of its two leads, Lily Sullivan as Beth and Alyssa Sutherland as Ellie, who have to quickly sell us on decades of history between the two of them, including how much they both love and hurt each other, and then push them into antagonistic roles. I think that Sullivan is a really magnetic protagonist who's great at reacting to the horrifying reality unfolding around her. Most importantly, she's fearlessly vulnerable, not afraid to be scared, hurt, confident, and foolish. Sutherland stands out even more simply because of the breadth of her performance. Not just having to play Ellie, a lovable and recognizable character with not much screen time, but also the Deadite inside her body, covered in hideous makeup, contorting, attacking, and becoming a sadistic, ghoulishly delicious villain that only wants to make her victims suffer. Leveraging the sway Ellie has over her children as their mom to lower their defenses and just say all the most messed up shit you'd ever hear slip from a crazed parent. Mommy's with the maggots now. Like previous films, Cronin has his Deadites slip back into their normal personalities for brief moments. But unlike what came before, I'm not sure if those brief restorations are completely the doing of the Deadite. It often feels like Ellie and the rest are reaching out from the afterlife and pleading for help or mercy, which makes their fates even darker and the threat of possession much scarier. This might sound weird given all the, you know, dead family stuff and chainsawing monsters composed of your loved one's bits, but Evil Dead Rise is easily the most hopeful, positive entry in the entire franchise. Hear me out. Raimi's original The Evil Dead has no larger hope than getting at least one of our characters out of the cabin, and ends with Ash about to be possessed. Evil Dead 2 is a never-ending cycle of madness that reinforces Ash's inescapable place in the battle against the Necronomicon. Army of Darkness is pretty light, but still makes it clear the Deadites are a never-ending force. Throw in that original apocalyptic ending and Ash is absolutely screwed. Evil Dead 2013 gives Mia the chance to overcome her addiction via possession, but is a pretty nihilistic experience. And Ash vs. Evil Dead is super fun, but hundreds of people explode into chunks in the show. The driving force behind Rise is Beth's grappling with motherhood and the struggle to save her family. She can't save everyone, but she ultimately becomes a brave parental figure, confident in who she is and what she wants in life, walking away free with Cassie, safe, but still willing to do whatever it takes to protect her. What will be the future of the Evil Dead franchise? Bruce Campbell stated that, we're going to try and do them more like every two or three years rather than every 10 years. It's also the first time Sam is working with his brother Ivan to create an overall Bible that will give future writers and directors an idea of where this thing should go next, to potentially tie in some of these stories. So I think it's going to get a little more tied in as the years go by, but because it's all about the books. It could be a book in the past, a book in the future. It's yet to be determined. Lee Cronin also stated that he had ideas for four sequels, pursuing either Beth's journey, more in the apartment, the lingering evil in the woods, or a prequel about the priests from the record. At the time of recording this video, nothing is set in stone. Personally, I'm a little torn. Evil Dead is my favorite horror franchise, as you probably already know if you watch the channel, but I don't need the series completely blown out or veering into cinematic universe territory. I'll always be excited for more Evil Dead, and with the lore of three books of the dead established, the franchise has a flexibility that makes it possible for Beth, Mia, or even Ash to return. Yes, I know Bruce said he was done, no, I don't believe him, whatever may come. I'm thrilled for more Evil Dead, and Rise is a worthy addition to the legacy of horror's strongest franchise. Thanks for watching today's video and happy Halloween! We're now deep into our entire month of Halloween videos, and I felt it was the right time for me to finally circle back around to Evil Dead Rise from earlier this year. Right after the movie came out, I put together a shorts review of the film, and that just had some brief overall thoughts about the film. But I always knew that I wanted to eventually do a full video for the film, and now here we are. 
I have previously done videos on the original Evil Dead trilogy and the 2013 reboot as well. And like I said in the video, this is my favorite horror franchise of all time. And of course, Evil Dead 2 is the greatest movie of all time. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that I did a video on Evil Dead Rise. And that just leaves Ash vs. Evil Dead as the final piece of my coverage. And I will get to that, hopefully sooner rather than later. As I already said in the video, I thought that Evil Dead Rise was a really strong addition to the franchise, and I think that it holds up really well on rewatches. I'll be interested to see where the franchise goes from here, especially as they seem to be intent on making a lot more Evil Dead movies. But I think that whatever comes next, Evil Dead Rise will already have a strong place in the overall franchise. And with a little more time, it won't seem like the odd duck within the larger scope of everything. Evil Dead 2 will always be my favorite of the entire series, and you can never really replace Raimi or Campbell, but I think that Cronin and crew did an excellent job at continuing the series and giving it some new life. I would love to hear your thoughts on Evil Dead Rise and where you would rank it within the larger franchise, as well as any other Evil Dead videos that you'd like for me to do. Obviously there's lots of video games and comic books as well, but they're a little bit more secondary to everything like the movies and the TV show. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons for their continued support. If you'd like to be a patron, it's only a dollar a month for early access to every video, as well as exclusive Patreon-only reviews. And I am doing lots and lots of reviews for October for the special Halloween celebration. So until next time, as the Halloween celebration rolls on, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves. And join us. Happy Halloween!